you think that the local government, uh, the California government, and the, the are they going to view this as something that is, you know, I, I get cynical and I think that a lot of the motivations of these politicians are based off these special interest groups mm -hmm. that are back in their campaigns uh, that are funneling money in uh, through different through different ways to these politicians. And so therefore, it may not be technically about lowering emissions. It might be more about like lowering emissions only if they check these boxes, which, by the way, just so happen to coincide with the special interests that I'm aligned with. Right. Would they view something like this as like still kind of tangential to oil and gas since it's underground? There's mm -hmm. drilling. I don't know if there's fracking involved mm -hmm. at all, but um, do they do you think that they will view it through that lens or will they be open to uh, using some of these? Uh, more traditional resources, at least the reservoir, uh, mm -hmm. and then coupling that with this new kind of uh, quote unquote green technology. I know that I think San Diego is saying that they want to go all renewable yeah. by 2030, 2035. Like, would this fall into that bucket, or do you think right. that it's going to face some kind of opposition from the environmental or governmental front? Yeah, I think yes to both. I think it's exciting and it aligns with the goals of of different cities that are adopting the the you know clean emissions and G greenhouse gas reduction goals. But it's also going to face opposition because they oppose everything, and that's one of the issues on the policy front. Is you know we have what's called California Environmental Quality Act (CEQA). It's kind of like NEPA at the national level, but really on steroids. But uh, if you meet CEQA in California, you theoretically should be able to go ahead and develop your project. But there's always legal challenges to uh, to land use, to potential water contamination, to um, you know any environmental impact. So I think there will be um, there will be a opposition. But at the same time, if you want to get to these clean power goals you have to develop the project. So there, I, I, I think there will be a moment where the courts step in and, and we're seeing that the California Energy Commission has a streamlined process. Nobody's gone through it yet in terms of taking a project from start to finish, but the policymakers and the agencies are starting to you know, discuss how they streamline the permit process and give some line of sight on development. So, uh, but that's a really, as you know, as a developer, that's a really tough situation because you just have to stay motivated every day in good faith that, you know, they're not going to change the power goals. They're not going to change the rules of the game as you're developing your project. But I think we're really far down this road of, decarbonizing the, the grid and electrifying everything at the same time. So I don't really see that slowing down, but it's kind of like, how do you, how do you like jump onto the freight train as it's going down the track, you know, 10 right. miles an hour. Do there, does the renewables industry face a lot of these issues in California? I know California is pushing the renewables, but are they in a similar bucket with almost every other industry where there's just tons of red tape and hurdles and has it slowed down uh, any of those projects? I'm just not as plugged into what's yeah. going on on that side of it, but I'm wondering if they're facing any of this as well. They are definitely from the standpoint of, you know, number one, wind is built out in California. So now that now that fight is offshore, offshore Morro Bay, Northern California and the technology you know, doesn't really even exist yet to make that economic. So that'll be an ongoing fight over 20 years on the wind side. On the on the PV and battery side, the, the big challenge I see for that segment is the interconnection process with our independent mm. system operator, whereby it's taking Kaizo, the California independent system operator, three years to get a project into the queue and then interconnected. And the the problem on top of that is 99% of these projects are traditional PV solar arrays backed up by lithium ion batteries. And when you really get down to looking at it from, you know, a megawatt hour availability on a, on an annual scale, you know, you're looking at four hour segments of availability with these battery packs and they're stacking them from let's call it, you know, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. and 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. and throughout the evening calling it long duration energy storage but it's really not it's really just kind of a musical chairs of flipping on the battery packs when you look at it that way so i think they're facing an issue with the grid operator and the and the public utility commission of hey we've got enough you know we need 60 gigawatts of storage but at 
five gigawatts or 20 gigawatts of lithium ion we're at we have enough we have enough in the queue we don't need any more of these uh intermittent you know somewhat unreliable solutions to the clean grid so that's kind of a long way to answer it uh but i think that's the bigger challenge for those projects down the road will be the interconnection process 